morning and welcome back. Mr. Parker here live for today's episode of Homeschool Psychology, the talk show. And we have an awesome show for you today. We have our two special guests today. One is Heather Johnson, owner of La Dida Theater Studio. And the other is Jabe Marcono, who is a drummer from Puerto Rico. And I just cannot wait to tell you all about our show, which is all about creativity. Something that I love, something that both of our guests love. And it's all about creativity. So what is being creative? Having an imagination, making things up from nowhere. Creativity is a wonderful skill, and I hope you practice it daily. Some things that I do to be creative are I play music, I try and draw, I go outside and make up new games. Creativity is having fun, it's risk taking, it's exploration of the world. Creativity can be so many things. And it's so important because when we're creative, we're being flexible. And I don't mean like touch your toes flexible. I mean like you're able to try things that no one has ever done before or maybe you have no experience with. That's being creative. I have never drawn with my hands before, but if I do that, that's being creative. When we're not creative, we can be real rigid. It means we like doing things the same way every time. And while routines are great, being creative opens our whole world up to new experiences. So let's get our first guest on the show today. It is Heather Johnson, all the way from Fort Collins, Colorado. Heather, welcome to the show. You are in fact muted. I so unmuted, here oh. I am. All right. Heather, welcome. How are you? Good, how are you, Adam? I'm so good. Um, we were just talking a little bit about you. I said you own a theater company. Yeah. I said it's for the young at heart and for the young. So it's for everybody? Yeah, it's for everybody. Love yeah, it. it's great. I love what I do. My job is amazing. I get to teach people all about theater, which is making plays and using your imagination. And it is just the best time. Great. So I've been to a movie theater before, but that's mm. not what this is. No, this is live theater. So if you've ever, uh, maybe at your school, you've brought in some performers and the kids have gathered in the gymnasium and people have done a live show right in front of them. So the story you're seeing is unfolding right before your eyes. Wow, that sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. So you're up in Fort Collins and you mm -hmm. have this theater company and you just, you put on plays and you help kids be creative? Yeah, yeah, we use creativity all the time. I like to think of it as like, everybody has their own special blend of spices. I don't know if you cook much, but uh, you know, every meal you can flavor a little different and every person has creativity, their own kind, their own special ingredients. And so we like to bring a lot of different people together and have them all add their own creative input and everyone has different ideas and that's what makes theater really come alive. So in theater and in creativity, we're taking a little bit of everybody and making this new thing. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's really fun. We're telling stories that have never been told before or telling stories maybe you've heard before, but in different ways. And you know, like if you've ever seen a show before with the same character, when you see two different people play the character, it feels totally different. That's so cool. So our topic is creativity. And I'm wondering, uh, it sounds like you might need a little creativity to be in theater. Oh yeah, I'd say a lot of creativity. You, uh, we like to think of your imagination, you have to like turn it on. Because sometimes our imaginations are off, they're kind of resting, or we're just responding, we're, we're maybe mimicking other people and telling, they tell us to say something and then we repeat it back. But with creativity, you get to add your own unique flavor to it. And that's what's so cool. So you have to kind of warm up your muscles and get your brain turned on. Cool. So I don't just wake up every morning and I'm the most creative I'm ever going to be. I have to work at it. 
Yeah. You have to, you have to, it's like a muscle. You have to exercise it. You have to use it over and over again. So we play a ton of games, which I know theater is a, it's work. It's a lot of work, but it's like disguised as fun because we play all these games that are just about getting our brains to fire and have fun ideas. Cool. So you guys are doing these different games. You're putting on plays. What, why is creativity so important? I, I like to do things the same way every day. What's wrong with that? I think it really grows us as people. I think it's important for us to know that we have our own unique ideas and our own perspectives. And then, you know, you might have an idea that I didn't come up with and I get to give you the opportunity to be creative and you teach me something I didn't know. And then I offer you something creative and you were like, wow, I never thought of it from that perspective. So if we all work really hard to be creative, we make our world a better place. Great. So creativity is like collaboration. Like, yeah. I'm really good at one thing and you're really good at something else, but together we're both really good at even more things. Yeah. And that's, they call theater the most collaborative art form, which means people coming together with so many different ideas and specialties and building something totally unique together. And that's what makes it so special and so different from other kinds of performance or art. Awesome. Theater sounds really cool. It is so cool. <laughs> so I, I'm wondering, like, I want to work on being more creative. And so what can I do? Oh, so many good ideas. So we play a ton of games. Um, one, do you want to play a game with me right now? That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this game, I like to play this one with my students and you can play students of all ages. And sometimes, especially like right now, if people are with their families a lot, you can play this one with your family or your friends at recess. Um, it's called fill in the blank story. So I'm going to narrate a story and you could play this with 10 people, but since it's just you and me, Adam, you'll be the only one who fills in the blank. But I could point to a bunch of different friends. If I had 10 friends in here, all my friends could fill in the blanks. So you're going to, anytime I point to you, you're going to fill in the blank with the first thing that comes to your head. And there are no wrong answers. You could say banana or you could say mailman. And those are all right answers. Okay. 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 So we're going to make up a story together. Once upon a time, there was a magical land called Potatoville. Potatoville. Potatoville was very cool because they had one special thing that grew from the ground and it was bananas. Bananas. Now these bananas were not your ordinary grocery store bananas. They tasted really good. And when you ate them, something very magical happened. When you ate these bananas from Potatoville, you turned into a dragon. You turn into a dragon. And so Potatoville was like the coolest place. And there was one very special person who lived there. And this person was called George. George. Now George's job was to guard over the banana farms. He guarded day, he guarded night, and he was very good at his job. He loved his job so much and he even had a special badge and on the badge it said, the best George in the whole universe. The best George in the whole universe and he was so proud of his job. But guess what? One morning, he woke up from his shift and he looked, he took his binoculars and he looked out at the banana farm and he saw a bunch of pigs, a bunch of pigs. And they had eaten all of the bananas. He didn't know how this could happen. He had done all his jobs. He checked the perimeters, he'd set up the fences and yet the pigs got through and ate the bananas. He was devastated. He knew he was going to lose his badge and no one would ever respect him again. He started to weep and weep and weep. And as he cried, he came up with an idea. He said, I need to call Heather. Heather. She'll know exactly what to do. So he ring, 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 rang up and he called me. Yes, the narrator of this story. And I told him, you know what you need to do. You need to plant the pigs in the ground. So he took the pigs. Now these pigs could breathe underground, so it was okay. He took the pigs and he buried them underground. And the pigs said in their oink oink way, This is comfy. 
this is comfy. They loved it. They were loving this. They'd never gotten so much attention in their life. So he planted the pigs in the ground and the most magical thing started to happen from their little snouts and their little hooves grew giant bananas. Giant bananas bigger than ever before. These bananas could not only feed Potatoville, but they could feed the entire continent of the continent of Antarctica. Of Antarctica, where Potatoville happens to be located. And all of Antarctica was so happy with George. They gave him a new badge. And on this badge, it said, Best banana farmer ever. Best banana farmer ever. And George and Potatoville and the pigs and me, we all lived happily ever after. The end. That was Great. so cool, Heather. Isn't that so fun? And I tell you, no matter how many times you play that game, it is never the same story. I love it. So like creativity is just shouting out the first thing that comes to your head, collaborating with other people, just, just being silly. Yeah, it's using your brain and trusting yourself. You have to have a lot of confidence in yourself and believe that you have something really special to offer. And then being bold and saying it. I love it. I love how like you had no idea what I was going to say and whether it was embarrassing or silly or, or it was about you, you just ran with it. Yeah, that's, that's the collaboration part. And I was being creative too, because when you gave me something that I didn't expect, I had to fill it in and figure out what the next piece of the story would be. So together we were both being super creative and I don't know about you, but my brain feels all fired up now. Yeah, I can, it, I can tell it feels a little stronger. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Heather, that was a, such a fun game. Good, um, I'm glad. Well, I hope you guys play it some more. And there's tons of more creative theater games out there. So you can Google them. There's an endless supply of theater games. Great. So we're going to put um, La Di Da in uh, our little comments below so yeah. everybody can check it out. Um, besides cool theater games, like what if I'm an only child like I am? How mm -hmm. do I practice my creativity? Do I just look in the mirror and play theater games like that? Yeah, or another really fun game is to play a game called Props, and you have to find something in your house. It could be anything. It could be my cell phone, for instance, or a lamp, and you have to think about all the creative ways that you can imagine that thing to not be what it is. So if this isn't a phone, it could be, it could be like a surfboard for my finger man, or it could be, um, it could be a piece of sandwich you know all sorts of things you mean like my pen binoculars your pen binoculars that's perfect right um i have uh this plant could become my crown oh, you right. know all sorts of things there's all sorts of ways just try to use your brain in ways that maybe you wouldn't normally use it try to think of fun ideas i love it heather thank you so much for being here helping our brains grow their creative muscles and, and just bring your positive attitude to this show. Thank you so oh, much. Thanks so much for having me. It was such a delight to be here. Well, Heather, I'm, we're going to have to play some more creative games sometime soon, okay? You let me know. I'm always here. All right, Heather. We'll have a wonderful day. Bye. You, bye. Thanks, Mr. Parker. Wow. I'm feeling extra creative. Thanks to Heather. That was so fun. I hope you guys had a good time listening. So our show is going to be a little different today. We're going to have another special guest who is also going to be our musical guest. And it is Jabe Marcono. And Jabe uh, plays drums. He teaches music in Puerto Rico. And I'm so excited to have him on the show. Let's get over to our Puerto Rican reporter, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker, what do you guys got? Thanks, Mr. Parker. I'm here with Jabe, live from Puerto Rico. Buenos noches, Jabe. Que paso? Que esta pasando? How are you, my friend? I am good. I'm so good. Thank you for being here. How are you today? I'm super excited. Super excited. So you have a bunch of drums behind you. Uh, yes. Tell us about who you are and what you do. Well, like you said, my name is Jabe Martano, and I am from Puerto Rico. I'm a music teacher, and I'm a musician too. So 
specifically a percussionist. That's why I have so many instruments, so many drums at home, because percussion is what I play as a musician. I also teach music and theater in a school in Puerto Rico called Dorado Academy. which is in the municipality of Dorado, north of the island. And uh, it's pretty cool, actually. I teach middle school and high school students. Uh, actually, I have like uh, almost 200 students by myself. So it's, it's a lot of people, a lot of different ages, but it's fun. It's, it's fun. So, so our episode today is all about creativity. And I imagine teaching 200 kids, teaching all instruments, playing all instruments, you probably know a little something about creativity. Yes, kind of. I, we can say that, yes. <laughs> Tell us about it. What is creativity to you? Why is it important? How do we do it? Well, I think creativity is a mix of imagination and will, right? Because you can imagine a lot of things, but if you do not do them, well, you're not creating anything, right? So I think it's a combination of imagination and will, right? And uh, creativity, I think it's everything. For example, in arts, if, if there's no creativity, there's no art at all, right? Because every art is created from scratch from, from different artists, right? Later on, you will see a video of me creating a little uh, rumbon, like we said in Puerto Rico, which means a little uh, party with music, right? And uh, it takes a lot of creativity and a lot of uh, energy to play our music and to play all the different instruments you will see, right? But also in other industries, in every industry, for example, when you have to create new products, you have to be creative and imagine what things the, the people need in sports. So I, I think the, the more creative athletes are the ones who succeed, you know? So I think creativity is very important in, in every way, right? Because we need it in our lives. Even, even when we cook for our loved ones, a little creativity here and there, it's, it's well appreciated by, by your family, right? So I think creativity is really, really important in, in everything in life because once something is created, if you want to evolve, you need creativity for it. So creativity is the base for the evolution, like the X-Men, that's right, evolution. <laughs> Perfect. So creativity, it takes imagination, it takes the will to go out and do it, and, and really creativity makes up everything around us in the world. Yes. Adding a little bit of chocolate syrup on our pancakes in the morning is creativity to, to make it taste a little bit better. Delicious. Awesome. So, you know, it's one thing to talk about it. How do we be creative? How do you create things? You, you wake up in the morning and you just go, okay, that's how I made my drum beat. Well, some days you start with a really, really good day because you start creating things from nothing. You just feel like this special vibe, we can call it, I don't know, that you, you have an idea and all you need is, is a little idea, right? And, and music, we, we call a little phrase of a song, the motive, okay? The motive. And the motive is a little phrase that you use to create something else, right? And music, uh, for example, uh, some pop songs started with a, with a chorus, okay? Someone create a chorus and start singing that chorus and maybe I, can, maybe I can create a song about it. Why? Because the chorus is the part that repeats most on a song, right? And that's why it's very important. So in music, Maybe I one morning I, I feel like playing an instrument, right? Whatever. Uh, let's say, for example, the congas, right? And uh, I start playing the congas, and I, and I feel like this rhythm is really cool, right? What about if I add something else? And and you and you start adding things, and maybe this works, and maybe this doesn't work, and maybe at the end you don't like it at all, but you try it, right? It's your imagination and the will, and you try it, right? And maybe you didn't like it and you leave it there. But later, 
okay, I don't know, maybe a week later, you come back and you listen to it, and hey, I have something else. Maybe I can add something to the, the thing I did last week, right? So I think that it's, it's very different for each uh, artist, it's very different for each, mu each musician and the composers and the singers. Everybody has creativity in their own way, right? Because we are all different. And we can talk about creativity and we can like define it, right? But at the end, it's, it's very different for, for everybody. Maybe you saw a video of someone and that inspires you to create something else, right? So in my case, I get inspired by a lot of uh, musicians, older musicians, teachers, uh, uh, and other uh, friends which I play with. And it's, it's awesome being surrounded by art because everything maybe could be a motive. <laughs> maybe it could be something to, that motivates us, right? But it's like a vibe. It's you, you feel the flow, you feel something is coming on and you keep going, you keep going. And maybe at the end you have something and maybe you like it, maybe you don't. But if you don't try, you will never know, right? So, so with creativity, do you just do the same thing every day or do you have to step outside of what's comfortable? The thing is that if you keep doing the same thing over and over, at some point, there's, there's no, no reason. Just for practicing purposes, right? For example, I play a lot of, uh, in a lot of places, well, I, I played when we didn't have uh, the situation all over the world, right? We play a lot in different places, but, but almost the same music with the same groups, okay? And you have to practice because you have to uh, keep, keep in shape, right? With your instruments and everything. But for creating, you need to, to think outside the box, like you said, you have to think, you have to, try things even though you're not sure if you're going to be able to do it but you have to try it like i said before if you don't try you will never know so you have to step outside the box and you have to try and you have to be brave and what do you have to lose you don't have to lose anything to lose right just failure and that's the most important thing to keep learning and evolving so yes you have to think outside the box and you have to be aware that for evolving, you need to try new things and you need to keep pushing yourself because if you don't create, well, I mean, everything is done already. So if you, you have to think outside the box because in this world, for example, in music, there's so many music, so many artists, so many songs that if you don't think outside the box, you're going to sound like someone else. So you have to try new things. You have to do things that, that nobody does. So maybe you think, I, I never has, nobody does this. I, I don't know why I'm doing it, but you never know. Maybe you are creating something new. But again, if you don't try it, you will never know. So don't be so hard on yourself. When you are creating, forget about everything and use whatever you have. Try to, to, to think outside the box. You said it, my friends, think outside the box do new things. I love it. So being creative is, is showing courage and taking a chance. It's, it's risk taking, even when you know you might fail or you probably will fail, but, but knowing that that failure is okay. You're creating within that failure. I love it. I love it. So tell us a little bit about, you're going to show us some music here in a little bit. Tell us about what you're going to show us. Yes. Well, first, I don't, I don't know it's gonna be one or two, I don't know the other, the order, but I'm gonna show you two videos. The first one, or the second one, <laughs> is gonna be me teaching you, my friends, of Bomba Puerto Rican. Bomba is a Puerto Rican music genre, okay? And uh, it's play, it was played by the Afri African-American people that went, came to Puerto Rico, okay? And uh, it's played with, a drums uh, you will see it on the video uh we call them barriles in spanish drums and we use a maraca and we use sticks that's it those are the instruments for the bomba and i'm going to show you a song and how to sing that song over the rhythm of bomba okay 
uh, the bomba Puerto Rican has dancers dancing to the music, okay? I am no dancer, so I cannot show you that part, but for you to know that <laughs> the bomba, also people dance to the bomba, okay? And it's awesome because the one of the drummers has to follow all the movements from the dancers, okay? If, for example, the dancer moves something or move the feet or move her, her arms or her skirt, the drummer has to follow with the head or with the sound, follow the movements of the dancers all, at all times. And it's really, really difficult. And you need a lot of concentration and you need to learn the sounds that you have to use for the specific movement. So it's a simple uh, rhythm because it's very uh, repetitive, but it has a, a lot of things going on, okay? And it's, it's, it's so flavored, so tasty. And once you start listening to the drums, it's inevitable that you're gonna start dancing and moving. At least, at least you're gonna start moving in your seat. So, Bomba Puerto Rican, right? It's one of the Puerto Rican genre, music genres, and uh, I'm gonna show you the Bomba, okay? And the rhythm that we're going to be using, it's called Sica, okay? And the S-I-C-A, Sica, okay? And um, like I said before, Barrile, Maraca, and the sticks, the name of the sticks is uh, the Qua, C-U-A, Qua, okay? So we're gonna use Qua, Maraca, and Barriles, and I'm going to do my best to sing for you. I'm sorry for that, but I'm, I, I'm gonna try and uh, sing a song for you, okay? Uh, and I think uh, you will like it. But don't worry, you have a subtitle, the lyrics of the chorus, and a subtitle, so I will help you with the Spanish, so don't worry about that. And then the other video, because we were talking about creativity, right? The other video, I, I thought maybe I could show you a little, little taste, or you can have a little taste of what I do on a daily basis when I'm playing music on the street, right? At least Latin music, right? And I use a lot of uh, Afro-Caribbean instruments, okay? Meaning Afro-Caribbean, for example, I, I maybe you have heard of the salsa, okay? Salsa is a, a rhythm that has a lot of rhythms inside, okay? We have guajira, we have chacha, we have montuno, which are different Cuban rhythms, okay? And those rhythms on the States in New York by Puerto Ricans and Venezuelans and Cuban artists, they create this rhythm called salsa in the 70s, okay? But the salsa is a mix of all those rhythms. So I'm gonna start, the video starts with a little uh, representation of our music from the mountain, okay? Or uh, musica jibara, like we say in Spanish. And I played the cuatro, which is our national instrument. Let me show you the cuatro, okay? It's 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 like it's like a guitar with five double strings, okay? It is called cuatro, which means four, right? And it is called cuatro because at the beginning it has four strings. Then the instrument evolved and now it has five strings and double strings, okay? But the cuatro Puerto Rican, it's our national instrument, okay? And at the beginning of the video, and actually for the whole video, I'm gonna play also the cuatro, and I'm gonna play a little piece of a musica jibara a seis, which which is uh, called a villarán, okay? And that's one of the seises or one of the styles of music from the mountain. We have like a hundred and twenty something style, different styles. Yes. Yes, it's incredible. It's a whole new world, like Aladdin, right? Like the song, <laughs> a whole new world. It's, it's a lot of uh, different types of seises. And uh, the Villarán is one of the oldest ones, and it's my favorite, okay? And I use the Villarán at the beginning of the video, and we and the instruments and the way I'm playing the instruments sounds like musica jibara. And then, we make a little feel and then we enter to the salsa and we have a timbales soul. You know what a timbales are? If you don't know, maybe you have heard of Tito Puente. 
those are the timbales, okay? So, and I have a little timbale solo in the middle of the song, and I think it's gonna be pretty amazing. <laughs> or at least you will like it, hopefully, right? We so, to hear it, sounds amazing. Yes, yes. So I can, like I told you before, we were talking about creativity, so I try to play all those instruments, and I play the conga, the bongo, the cajon, and the clave at the same time, using my hands and my feet all at the same time. And then I play also a bass guitar, and I play the cuatro, and I play the timbales. So I play all those instruments, so trying to show you a little creativity of my own, doing what I do, it's nothing, I, I didn't create anything, I just uh, use the rhythms and create the feels and make the arrangements of the little uh, piece of music, but the creativity of using all those instruments all by myself, it's, it's awesome it's, and it's fun because I'm doing new things, I'm doing things that I don't do every day and uh, it's fun, <laughs> playing music, it's fun. So I hope you liked it. I know we're gonna love it. Jabe, thank you so much for being here and telling us all about creativity. And now we're gonna jump right in and watch your two videos. Thank you again. Thank you for inviting me, it's my pleasure. Hasta luego. Okay. friends today i'm gonna show you bomba puerto riqueña okay and i'm gonna show you how to sing a beautiful song but for the bomba we need instruments and the instruments we use for the bomba are the drum or how, as we call in the bomba el barril we need maraca one maraca and we need the quas which are two sticks that you use to hit the side of the drum okay so now we're gonna learn Bomba Puerto Riqueña and you all are going to sing with me. So check this out. Okay, so the title of the song is Maria Antonia, okay? And the chorus says something like this. Mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance. And it just says, look at Maria Antonia, how she dance our rhythm, okay? It's just that simple. So, I'm gonna sing the chorus again. Listen and repeat. Mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance. Again, two, three, and. Mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance. Okay? So, you're gonna sing the chorus, and I am going to improvise a few verses between the chorus. Okay? So, once we start, sing the chorus. I sing a verse, you sing the chorus, and I sing the verse, okay? Ready? <laughs> let's do this. So let's sing the chorus twice together. One, two, three, and. Mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance. Mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance. Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance, como ella mueve la falda, como ella mueve los pies. Coro, mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance, cuando ella tira piquete, con la melodía también. Mira Maria Antonia, como baila mi balance, oye mi balance, bomba en un 
Well, my friends, I hope you liked my class of Bomba Puerto Ricana. Now, you have homework. You have to look for Puerto Rico, which is a beautiful island in the Caribbean. See you soon, my friends, and stay safe. Music is life. Now, that was an awesome segment. Thank you, Jabe, for playing drums, for teaching us all about it. That was so, so cool. So, the next part of our show is, of course, Weathermen, Teddy and Pocky. Guys, what do you got? Today, I'm a frog. Creative, huh? Well, it's not too hot. Right, Pocky? What is going on? Great, great, great job. Let's go to our kids segment. Thanks, Miss Parker. I learned my soccer. It's back to you. <laughs> Super great job. Well, that's our show. It was a long one. And it was all about creativity. I hope that you can learn to step out of your comfort zone, to collaborate with other people, and to flex your creative muscles, because I know you've all got them in there. Whether it's drawing, or music, or making up a game, creativity lives inside of us. And I hope you have a chance to let it out this week. Have a wonderful, wonderful, creative week. And I'll see you next time. Bye!